Hey, Ryan, thanks for the pictures here. Um, yeah, this looks, uh, looks great. I think you got a great property, um, to light up. Uh, no question. The way I would start is I would really focus on, um, on the house. I love the look of this and I know you have some lights under here. Um, but it's not something obviously you're going to keep on all the time. So I'll give you some suggestions how I would light it and see if it's something, uh, that you, that you want to pursue. But, uh, the way I would start is I would, no question, I'd put some accent lights. So when I talk about an accent light or an up light, I'm basically talking about a light like this that um, goes on a ground stake in the ground, and then it's going to accent and highlight these pillars. So I would have one at the base of each of these pillars. So I would have three of them on each side that just light up the pillars. Um, and then what I would probably do is, uh, because you have a walkway, especially out here, I would try and maybe put some path lights uh, in between those pillars, but on this side, closer to the sidewalks, so one there, one there, and one there. Um, and your it'd be your call. You could do the same thing on the other side just to kind of create a nice even balance, but because you don't have a pathway there, I don't think um, it's mandatory. And also because I think we'll do some stuff with the tree here, you can probably get away with just the three path lights here. Um, if you really wanted to uh, make the house stand out, um, it'd be a little bit more work, but usually you can run some wire up the um, uh, up the east trough for the uh, the downspout and get it to the top here. And then we have some special gutter mounts um, that actually attach to the gutters, uh, whether you do them here or a little bit closer that you can screw the light into. And I would probably try and use some accent lights here as well. Um, I would at least at minimum do probably two in the middle here on both sides of the window uh, or uh, or even if you wanted to do uh, all four. So kind of one that shines up here, here, here and here. Um, that could be an option. It's a little bit more work um, and you'd have to run some wire up here, uh, but very doable. And usually what we do is, you know, just kind of hide the wire in the gutter. Um, the connections are all waterproof and stuff, so it's not going to affect uh, that at all but that would be how I would light the house but at, at bare minimum I would definitely do these uh, six pillars and then I would have the pathway lighting on this side and then to get to these uh, yeah I just I think that would just make them pop so much and the path lights here would really add some extra light um, and you might want to do it there because that path light's going to shed a little bit of light here and then this is going to shed a little bit of light here and here and then further on the corner so um, that's what I would do there and then getting into the the big oaks I love um, the giant oaks you have on the property now ideally the way I would do this is I would have probably um, one to two accent lights down below here fairly close to the trunk that really highlight the trunk and shoot that light as far up the trunk as possible um, with these lights it's a just a standard um, what they call a 20 watt equivalent bulb it's an LED it's a it's a four and a half watt bulb with uh, 270 lumens in it but I would probably bump that up because those trees are so large I would go up to a 7 watt bulb which would be like a 50 watt equivalent um, and I would narrow the uh, the angle of the bulb a, a little bit so what that does is it really it just um, it's obviously going to be brighter so that light's going to go a little bit further but then the narrower the angle is on that um, on the actual bulb uh, say 15 degrees as opposed to 35 degrees that light's going to shoot even that much further up so that's probably I would do it the easiest way would probably be to put like two kind of towards the base on you know on one two if not three sides even because it is such a large tree and really shine it up the other option um, it depends they're pretty tall trees and how big a ladder and everything you have but you could put one or two down at the base and then actually try and mount one up in the crook so you'd have to obviously run some wire up the tree which not everybody loves to do because they don't love to see the wire um, uh, just from experience usually once it's up there you don't even really notice it but if you wanted to probably throw in one or two in the uh, crook of the branches here to get the foliage would be another option but if you want to keep it simple two to three at the base uh, of every tree the larger the tree you know maybe the more lights if they're a little bit smaller and they have a little bit bigger canopy like maybe some of these this you might be able to get away with two because it's going to capture more light in that canopy but these ones that are really tall or especially this front one um, you may want to consider three uh, up and accent lights on that one and we would just increase the intensity so i'll send you 
a price based on those suggestions with call it two accent lights here I, I'll, I'll do two accent lights on all the oak trees um, with the brighter intensity and narrower angle beams on the bulbs as well as everything I talked about on the house uh, just so it at least gives you a ballpark of what to go or uh, what you're looking at and then from there we can kind of take some lights out or add some or change some things but at least it'll give you a good starting point if you have any other questions by all means just shoot me another email and we'll go from there all right thanks Ryan thanks again for watching guys as we show you how to easily install low voltage landscape lighting so there's Various different lights you can look at. The most popular is easily the up light, accent light, or bullet light, often used to highlight different trees and, and features in your yard. Another very popular light is a wash light, often used to highlight the fronts of homes and beautiful stonework. Uh, path and garden lighting is also very popular to use to light walkways and garden areas and plant material down below as well as hardscape lighting which is used in different kinds of hardscapes as well as on fences and decks and can also create some cool effects and a great way to see what looks good is just to take a flashlight or, or any kind of light around at night shine it on a few of those features and really see what looks good and where you're going to position those lights i strongly recommend looking at led energy efficient bulbs for all of your landscape lighting it saves on power and it lasts a long long time you see they only use 40 watts, 260 lumens is very bright, and they still have that warm white or warm white look that you would find in an incandescent fixture. And if you have an existing landscape lighting system that is incandescent, it's very easy to retrofit with LED bulbs. Again, just to save power and not have to be changing bulbs all the time. What we often recommend is go and find really good quality outdoor rated LED bulbs, and then go find really good incandescent fixtures and just marry the two together and retrofit your incandescent fixtures with really good quality LED bulbs and it'll help bring the cost down rather than going and buying a fully integrated LED fixture uh, which looks good and lasts a long time but they do cost a lot more than doing this and just finding a really good fixture and retrofitting it with a really good bulb so once you know where you're gonna put your lights and you have your lights picked out the next step is to start placing your lights so You've determined where they're going to go. Start by digging just a small hole and just preliminarily placing your lights. I recommend using a rubber mallet so that you can really pound those ground stakes in and give them some good stability. Screw your light in afterwards so you can really get it in there. Make sure everything's level. And then from there, you start laying out your wire once you got all your lights in place. And be sure to leave extra wire at every fixture just to give yourself some wiggle room connecting the lights it's quite simple when you make your splice in your wire you'll have a wire going in and a wire going out for each connection as well as your fixture wire and at every light you're going to have two of those connections i recommend a good waterproof connection either a, a gel filled snap lock connector or these uh, gel filled dbry connectors that come in two parts that you have a Moret that screws on and keeps the wires tight and then it fills the wire fills into a gel filled tube that keeps the water out so just be sure to make sure you're getting good waterproof connections that keep the wires free of the elements as well as keep them from pulling apart the next step is selecting your transformer uh, very easy to do if you look on any bulb that you purchase it should give you the wattage but if you have a four and a half watt bulb and you have 10 of those that's going to give you 45 watts which means you want to select a transformer that's just slightly bigger than that. And I recommend trying to find a transformer that has a photo cell as well as a timer built into it for easy use. Uh, they're very easy to wire in your transformer. Depending on the transformer you have, it's generally going to have a common tap and a 12 volt tap. You just put one wire into each tap, screw them down tight, mount your transformer close to your GFCI receptacle so that you can get power, plug it in. Turn it on and go and make sure all your lights work before you start burying any wire. So once you've checked all your lights and everything works, you can start burying them. One thing I would recommend is looking at the Weon Outdoor Wi-Fi switch. It's a great tool if you want to make your landscape lighting system totally smart and Wi-Fi operated. Uh, to bury the wires, very easy. With a flat-ended shovel, creating a trench that's six to eight inches deep, spreading the turf open and pushing that wire down and stomping it down within no time at all. It looks like you haven't even been there. And in the mulch, it's just a matter of pulling it back and creating a, a path to lay down that wire. 
stapling it down and burying everything over that. So hopefully that helped. And if you have any questions, by all means, you can always reach out to us and follow us on Facebook. And Hey guys, thanks so much for watching that video. I hope you guys got some great ideas for your own do-it-yourself landscape lighting projects. If you want your own free consultation video, like I said before, email me your pictures at cal at lightingdoctor.ca or go and visit us at lightingdoctor.ca and be sure to check out our Try It Before You Buy a Light. Again, we can get one premium grade fixture and a King Innovation Instalight battery operated demo kit that you can go and test those lights out on your property before you make any big purchases. So I hope to see you guys again soon. And again, go get your free consultations by emailing your pictures or visit us at lightingdoctor.ca. Thanks so much for watching.